This problem about a rocket illustrates cases where you have um, two separate phases of the motion that have different accelerations, so you really can't use one set of equations to solve it. You have to solve one phase, and then you solve the second phase. All right, so it's sort of a multiple segment problem. So let's first read it, think it through, and figure out where the two segments are, and then we'll know what to do with them. So a rocket causes upwards acceleration of 15 meters per second squared for 10 seconds. Um, then, the, then it cuts out, how high does a rocket get? Okay, so this wasn't real well written. This is a case of kind of a vague problem. So we, we will do better on pledge and homework or on exams. But the rocket causes upwards acceleration of 15 meters per second squared for 10 seconds means it's a launch. I should have said it was a launch. So it started from rest. That's the key. All right, so it starts on the ground, VI equals zero, and it launches 15 meters per second squared. Right, so it gets way up, say, here, and then it cuts out. And after it cuts out, though, it has some velocity. Right? So initially, in this phase, VI was zero, and it launches and is driven up. In this phase, there's another VI, a different VI, because now it's not being pushed uh, by the fuel. Now its acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, because now it's a free particle just falling under the influence of gravity. So it's in free fall up here. It's being driven in A equals 15 meters per second squared there. So really the two regions, and then it sort of goes up until it runs out of, uh, its velocity goes to zero and it hits the top where V equals zero. So the two ranges you're gonna deal with are these two. Here is the powered flight 15 meters per second squared for 10 seconds and then however high it goes after that. All right, so let's call them one and two. So let's do one first. All right, so one is straightforward kinematics. You have an acceleration for a time. So you just say the final position equals the initial position zero plus the initial velocity times time, but that's zero, the initial velocity, plus one half a, 15 meters per second squared times time squared. So 10 squared is 100, 1500 divided by two, we find in this first phase, it gets up to 750 meters. That's not the answer. That's basically here. We've made it to 750 meters. Now for the second phase, it's gonna keep going. Okay, now remember, you can have negative acceleration and positive velocity. It's just that it's slowing down. Right. When velocity is one way, acceleration is the other way, slowing down, and eventually it'll stop. It'll go it'll slow down to zero, and then it'll start to fall. So we just care about how high it gets. We care about the point when it reaches V equals zero. Okay, so basically we have free fall with an initial velocity. That's all we got to do. Except, look, we don't know the initial velocity. We can calculate it pretty fast, though, because we know we went 15 meters per second squared for 10 seconds. That's just V final equals V initial zero plus acceleration times time. All right, so we know the final velocity of that thing is 150 meters per second. That's, that's right here. This VI is 150 meters per second. So then uh, we can say how high does it really get then? We can actually apply this equation one time now for the final answer, because we can treat this 750 as just an initial uh, position. All right, so the actual answer is initial position, 750, uh, plus the uh, initial velocity times time, 150. Oh, we don't know time. Oh, shoot, we forgot to get time. Well, actually, we do know time. We can get it pretty quick because we know now it's at 150 meters per second, and we know it's decelerating. It's, it's got a negative acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. So we can apply uh, basically this again, and we say we want this to be zero, and the initial is 150, and this is negative 9.8 times t, so it's really just 150 over 9.8. So I'll even write it in here like that, 150 over 9.8. That's how long this phase lasts. It's how long it takes to take that 150 meters per second and drive it to zero, with negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's uh, xi plus vi 
t plus 1 half negative 9.8, and then this t squared, 150 over 9.8 squared. So you add all that up, and you get, let's see, this is, uh, you get these together like 3,000 and something, this is minus 1150, and you get 1896 meters. And that's the full answer, because in this long equation, this standard kinematics equation, we did include the initial phase. Um, the one shortcut you could do for the second phase is you could say, well, we have the initial velocity, and it decelerated, and we want to know how far it got. And you can use the shortcut equation. Rather than using uh, this and this, you could also say in phase two, let's see, phase two started here. In phase two, v final is zero. v final squared equals v initial squared. Uh, the initial square we know was 150 squared plus 2, acceleration, negative 9.8, and then d, or delta x. That's that, common, that, that formula we derived that's really a combination of these two. So you turn that around and you solve it, and you can get d for that part is 1148 meters. That's how far it went up with an initial velocity of 150, and you add that to the 750, and you get the same thing, about 1896. Okay, so look for problems where you really have to think of it as two separate bases.